Getting right into today's video, we're going to start off by removing my client's current design. For this process, I'm using my e-file at 11,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using very light pressure while using the 5-in-1 bit from Kiara Sky in medium grit. Our main focus is to remove the design without damaging the acrylic underneath. I want to keep that thickness as I'm only going to be doing an acrylic fill on her nails today. So we're just going to be using very, very light pressure and until we see that the design is removed that is when we shall stop filing in those areas now all in one motion i will be removing any lifting she may have if she has any she has very 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 little amount of lifting on a few of the nails so i'm going to make sure that i thin that out nicely and remove that with this bit definitely very important that when you're using a carbide bit of any type you do not file on the natural nail so i'm going to focus on that acrylic and i'm going to stay on the acrylic while trying to remove that lifted area Now, once I'm done removing that design, we're going to be going in and reshaping her nails. This definitely can wait until the end. I just prefer to do it now. That way I don't make it extremely bulky when I go and apply my acrylic. Personal preference, you guys can absolutely bypass this step and do this at the final filing process. So I'm just taking my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file, filing the sides, making sure that that nail is nice and sharp. We love a very, very sharp stiletto, almost to the point where it's very dangerous. So we're just going to go ahead and file that. As you guys can see, the wear and tear from just normal daily use of your hands, they do get slightly rounded. So I want to make sure that that is super, super pointy. Now, once I'm done with that, we're going to be going in and buffing the shine off of her natural nail, doing my regular process with my e-file at 4,000 RPMs. Along with that, I'm using the Profiles Backstage Sanding Band and Mandrel Bit. We're going to be focusing on that natural nail growth and obviously pushing back her cuticle area very, very so gently. If you guys have been following along the process of me doing Brittany's nails, she has encountered an allergic reaction of some sort. We're still playing it safe and not really messing with her cuticles, so I'm trying to do this as soft and really trying to stay away from the cuticles as much as possible to prevent any type of irritation. Now I'm going to be going in with my needle bit very so gently otherwise she will get lifting but the step that I'm going to be bypassing is the usage of my cuticle ball bit. So I'm still going to try to do this because as you can see there's still a lot of dead skin that we have to remove in order for the acrylic to adhere properly and it's just not possible to do so with the mandrel bit as it is is very very thick now we're gonna be cleaning the surface of the nail with a lint free wipe and a little bit of young nail swipe this is gonna help remove any excess dust while also removing the oils that our natural nails produce if you did not know that our nails and skin produce natural oils so if you leave that on there they will cause lifting very very early on i'm going to be going in with my acrylic primer from kiara sky this has been my go-to recently it is a very thick consistency so do not be thrown off by it it works really really good just make sure that you allow it to dry properly otherwise the application can go on there kind of weird and it's definitely not a good thing. So make sure you guys let it dry. My kind of way of thinking that it's fully dry is once I'm done applying the primer on the other hand and then I gather all my products to apply my acrylic, then it should be dry by then. So here we're gonna be using a personal mix that I actually did. So if you guys followed her original set where I used that beautiful pink 
purple color that she has on her nails. It is a Chiara Sky acrylic. Now that acrylic has gone missing. I believe at some point I took it to my house and I have yet to find it. So I took it upon myself to create a mix that would match that color perfectly since we're doing an acrylic fill. And I was quite surprised that my mix actually matched flawlessly. So for that mix, if you guys are curious and want to recreate it yourself, I do not know the exact ratios of it, but in a container, I took Fiesta Sista from Not Polish and I started with that as my base. It is a pink color. And then I took Miss Mauve, which is a lilac lavender type of purple from Not Polish as well. And then I put in Nude Panther, which is a pinkish nude color. And that's pretty much how I got the color. So I first mixed the two pink colors together and then I added gradually in the purple because I knew that it had a purple undertone until I matched it perfectly. I'm honestly, like I said, very, very surprised that it is the perfect match to the existing acrylic. So a quick little tip, always try to mix your own colors if you don't have them. As long as you know like the color scheme and you're able to determine what undertones it has, you should be good to go. I've been mixing acrylic powders for the longest time since I started doing nails. And I could definitely say at this point that I've gotten pretty good at mimicking a color perfectly. Now for my acrylic process, I am using the Not Polish Monomer along with my acrylic brush from Profiles Backstage, the Sculpted Like It's Hot in the number 12. I absolutely adore that brush and I absolutely gravitate towards that one specifically when I'm doing fills because it is a little bit on the smaller side. So definitely love this brush. We're just gonna be going in with about a medium sized bead of acrylic and filling that growth. And then I am rebalancing that nail wherever I think it needs a little bit of rebalancing specifically in the apex area but also towards the tip if I may have over filed with my e-file. I want to make sure that I'm infilling any little divots that I created. Once everything is nice and dry, we're gonna be going in and filing the nails. For today's video, I'm actually just gonna be taking my e-file and filing around that cuticle area. This process has been my go-to for a while now just because I feel like I get everything a lot smoother with my hand file. So very quickly, making sure that I'm sealing that cuticle by taking my five in one bit at a speed of 10,000 RPMs. I'm gonna make sure that that acrylic is nice and flush to her natural nail. Otherwise, it can cause lifting as well. So you wanna make sure that it is nice and thin. And then I'm gonna be taking my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file once again and filing the sides, making sure that everything is super straight. And then very quickly filing the surface of the nail as well to make sure everything is super, super smooth.
And then once again, we're gonna cleanse that surface of the nail with a lint-free wipe, a little bit of Young Nail Swipe, and then we're gonna begin our nail art application. Now I've heard of a lot of people using a top coat as their base for their nail art so that everything goes on there super smooth. I've never really done this, but I've been wanting to try it. So here we are. I'm gonna be taking Matte It From Not Polish and using that as my base. Just applying a thin layer of that on the entire set. I didn't know if we were gonna do any of them matte anyways, but I did know we were gonna be doing some sweater nails. So I wanted to go ahead and just prime everything with matte top coat just in case we were going to. You just never know. So I'm gonna be going in the light for 60 seconds. Make sure you fully cure that. And sometimes I like to do two rounds just to be safe. Now before we go in the light, always remember to wipe those sides so that it's not super bulky and it doesn't mess up your shape. Once we're out of the light, I'm going to be doing the little shoe print, footprint in the snow type of design. I've seen it all over social media and when she requested it, I was so excited. So my thought process behind this was if I just fully cover the surface that we want the footprints on, with white, then I can kind of carve out the little shoe prints. So here I'm taking the white gel liner from Profiles Backstage, and I'm taking my 3D brush because it is one of my thicker brushes, obviously, as you can see, and it'll help me infill the surface of the nail a lot quicker than if I used my liner. So now that I have the full nail of white gel polish, it is still wet. I'm going to take my 3D brush now clean with a little bit of Young Nail Swipe on there and I'm just simply going to start carving out the little shoe print. I started off with this one doing the top part of the shoe and then separately the bottom portion of the shoe and then I quickly realized that that is slightly complicated and it was not necessary to do it that way. So here I'm kind of carving out the bottom part and I felt like it was one taking a little bit too long and two, I still had to go in and fix it. So whenever I did that little line across and it made it look better, I realized that I could just do one long little oval and then go in and fix the tiny little details. So we're gonna do just that. I'm gonna be doing a longer oval and then with my liner brush and a little bit of white gel liner on there, we are going to be fixing it and making it look like a shoe. So essentially I'm gonna be doing a line across near the bottom and then the top portion of the shoe is going to get a slight curve and then boom you have a tiny little shoe print we're going to repeat that again so we're going to be doing two sets of footsteps and i think it's so cute and you could always sugar it and texturize it with acrylic either clear or white i actually did glitter on here and i'm using one of my profiles backstage very very micro fine glitters for that I didn't want it to be super bulky and it is very, very little amount of glitter, but it's still there and it looks so pretty afterwards. So just finishing off those tiny little details and then we're going to be pouring on that glitter over top of the wet gel surface. And then as always, we're going to cure in the light for a full 60 seconds. And we're gonna be doing a candy cane flame for this now. So I'm gonna be starting off with my base as my red. And she requested a deep, almost maroon, very, very beautiful Christmas red color instead of a very bright red, which I was totally excited about. I absolutely adore the deeper shades of really any color, especially around the winter time.
And for anyone that may be curious, I just took the red gel liner from Profiles Backstage and mixed it with the black gel liner to create this beautiful deep red. Next, I'm gonna be taking the white liner once again, and we're gonna be outlining that flame very, very carefully. I was pretty proud my lining uh, did pretty good this time. So I was very excited that I didn't struggle, especially with longer bristle brushes. I've always been terrified to do like more detailed designs like this, but I actually really liked it and I definitely think that I'm gonna start using this brush a lot more even though I already have implemented it. Like a lot of my videos, definitely really, really love this brush. And I don't know if I already mentioned it, but as you guys can see, it is the Not Polish brush once again. Next, we're gonna be going in with our little lines for the candy cane details. The key to this is really to do some thick ones, some thin ones, leave some good amount of red in between, just use your imagination and draw them diagonally on whatever design you're gonna be doing. And then, of course, it couldn't be a Christmas set without some snowflakes. We are going to be doing a mixture of some deep red ones and some white ones. Just to add a little bit of contrast and so that they match very, very well with the rest of the nails. I think they turned out so, so pretty. And then I'm also going to be doing tiny little white dots and then the little lens flare stars to just tie everything together and add another little extra detail in there. Super, super simple on the snowflakes. They're pretty much just consistent with line work. Super, super easy. I am obsessed with snowflakes, not even gonna lie. I have yet to be annoyed of doing snowflakes. <laughs> I just think they're like super, super easy and they look so cute no matter what color combo you use. And then here we're gonna be doing a peppermint swirl type of nail. I haven't done this in over a year, obviously since last Christmas. So I was slightly terrified that it wasn't gonna turn out. So I just gave myself pretty much a little dot for the middle point. And we're gonna be doing very long S shapes. So just start on one corner and then you're gonna connect to the opposite side. And I feel like that is probably the easiest way to create it. And then once I have my kind of line where I want it to be, we're gonna be thickening it up a little bit. And at this point, I'm pretty sure I was extremely terrified that I was doing it incorrectly. But once I finished, I was pretty proud. So again, it's gonna be like a very loose S shape.
And then we're gonna be repeating that until we infill all of the red sections that we want to do. And then I'm gonna be implementing some white ones as well. Same process, kind of a curved line going opposites from each other across the entire surface of that nail. Pretty much just eyeballing it to see wherever I wanna add thicker ones and thinner ones. And do note that for this one, I cured the red layer. And so the white one, we're gonna be sugaring. I only wanted the glitter to stick to the white. So I made sure that I cured my red lines before I went in with this step. And then for our thumb, we figured we would do a little heart also with the peppermint vibes. So I thought it was such a cute idea. We're going to be starting off same pretty much process that we did on the flame with our red base. We're gonna cure that, outline it with our white, and then do our little stripes with the white as well. And then of course we're gonna be going in with our top coat once everything is fully, fully cured. Make sure you go in there with one last round of 60 seconds to make sure that all of the nails are fully dry before you go in with this step or you will regret the smearing of that gel liner. We're going in with Gloss It from Not Polish, adding a thin layer of that on the entire surface of her nails. I'm gonna be making sure that I am really pressing that into especially the nail art parts because we did a lot of sugaring and I wanna make sure that everything is super, super smooth. That pretty much concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a ton and I'll see you guys next time.